I've used my amazing modeling skills to create this quick polygon hair on this character's head. And as you can see, this is quite beautiful and really looks like a very realistic hairstyle. But in all seriousness, I just took a few minutes to set up this quick set of hair strips to show you this functionality. And this is just a mesh with a bunch of polygonal real-time gain type of hairs that a lot of characters usually come with and that are very easy for artists who are familiar with mesh modeling to create create and model to define the exact hairstyle that your character could use to match a specific concept drawing. So once I have this mesh, all I need to do is select the mesh which contains all of these objects, or if you have multiple meshes for this object, select all of them, go back to my Ornatrix shelf and use the hair from mesh strips button to generate the strips. And right away we have hairs generated for every one of these meshes, and in some of them this is a bit problematic because we can see that the hairs here are perpendicular. Let's just go right away and and add a render settings modifier to see where the roots are. You can see that the render settings modifier tapers the hairs to be thick at the base and then thin out towards the tip of the strands. So right now these are not pointing in the correct direction. And this one strip over here is not even generated along the strip but instead perpendicular to it. To be able to massively modify all of the strips to be pointed in the right direction, we can tell Ornatrix to point all of the hairs in the direction of down. So to do this I go to to my hair for mesh strips node. Next to the rotate strips button, we have a direction drop down. By default, this is set to rotate, which means that the rotation will simply switch the positions of each strips. The options in this drop down don't necessarily have to correspond to the direction inside the scene. They can be relative. So, for example, down does not always have to be down. It depends on the transform used for your object. So, you might have to try a few of these options to see which one works for you. For example, if I select down right now and I use the rotate strips option, you can see that it's actually trying to orient them all to go towards the back of the character. But instead, if I use the flow back option, and then you can see that the strips are now all trying to flow down. And this is evident by the fact that the roots of the strips are thicker than the tips and the tips indeed appear to be at the end. There will be still a few problematic hairs where this automatic orientation will not necessarily make the hair go in the direction you want. For example, in these two strips, the hair is still trying to flow down, but the way the strips are created is intended to be in a different way than this algorithm has automatically decided. So in this case, we can always go back into our mesh, mesh strip editing mode and we can select these two problematic strips. So I can select this one and use the rotate strips option with just the direction set to rotate to rotate the strip until it is pointing in the way that I want. And in this case, this is the correct direction. Then I can also go and select this strip and you see that previously the base that the algorithm has decided for the strip is going along this edge. So I can keep rotating it until my base is the correct one. So now that I have done this, this is actually the correct base over here and the strip is going down this direction as is evident by the arrow at the end of the strip. Now that I'm satisfied with all of these parameters, I can exit the mesh strip editing mode and I can do some of the other operations on my hairs. One cool effect that you can do with the strips is make sure that all of these hairs are not all generated flat along the mesh faces. We can actually add some volume to all of these hairs. And to do this, we can use this volume slider here and increase it and play around with this value until we get the effect that we want. There is also this diagram over here which is suggesting how the volume is distributed along each strip. So at the root of the mesh, we get no volume at all, but at the tip, we get a lot of volume. For example, to introduce an interesting effect of hair flat flattening out towards the tips, we can always decrease the volume at the end and increase the volume at the roots. And in this case, the hairs are going to be far away from the base of each smash strip, but they're going to taper towards the end of the strip. Of course, this depends on what effect you're going for. And typically, you probably will want to play around with this value and maybe add a few extra points in the middle until you're happy with the result that you want. On top of this, we can always go and add some modifiers like a frizz modifier to increase the randomness inside of our hair and maybe add some clumping as well as other effects that Ornatrix offers. In the future, we will also learn how to use things like strand groups to specify parameters for specific strips in the mesh, but we'll leave this for a further tutorial. One other thing you might notice is the fact that the hair segments right now correspond to the number of edges along each mesh strip, and our meshes are actually pretty rough at this point. There are two ways to smooth this out. First way is of course add some kind of polygonal smoothing algorithm that will tessellate 
isolate all of our mesh strip faces. But another way is to simply increase the points per strand count on every single hair that gets generated. If I do this, the hairs will automatically be smoothed as they go down along the strip length. So I can change this from a default value of 5 to something like 15 to triple the number of points that are sampled along each hair strip. Additionally, I can go and set this to 5 and I can always add a strand detail modifier at the top, which will provide us an even smoother value by resampling all of our hairs and adding more points along their length. Once I think I'm ready to render my hairs, it is probably a good idea to hide the base mesh just so we're left with the hairs generated from it. To do this, I just need to select my base polygonal strips mesh and I'm going to go to my layer editor and inside the display portion, I'm just going to create a new layer and move my polygonal strip mesh to this layer and then I'm just going to hide it. So what we're left with is the hair that we generated from this mesh and now we can see more clearly the final result that we are getting from our strip. So at this point you might want to go back and make some changes, for example change the polygonal strips to root some of these hairs which are now floating in mid-air, but I'm not going to do this for this tutorial. I might just change the radius of the hairs to make them a little bit more realistic. Maybe I will add a little bit more frizz at the roots of the hairs and control it a little bit more throughout the mesh. And finally, when I'm ready to render, I'm just going to set my material as I did before and I'm just going to render this. So I'm not going to perform this in this tutorial. You can always check previous tutorials to learn how to render my hair with V-Ray or any other render of your choice. But to get a sense of what kind of hairs will appear inside the render, I can always increase the view percentage of the hairs to 100% and this way we will see the final count of the hairs. And this is pretty much what you will see when rendering the hairs. Again, you can always unhide your base mesh at this point, perform some operations, extrude some faces, maybe add a little bit more detail to your strips where there was none before, until you achieve this perfect final result that you're going after. So I hope you can add this to your toolbox and use this in conjunction with all of the other great Ornatrix tools to improve your hair pipeline. Thank you very much for watching.